G'day, this is Captain Uben. This is an industrial hand. This is a unique weapon added by the Lonesome Road DLC, and it is a unique version of the Power Fist, I suppose. Retextured to look very, very high vis, very construction site like, and of course, it's got a big old Buzz Blade on the front, which, as you can tell, you hold it in front of you kind of like a Ripper to do a lot of damage. Now, the good thing about this particular weapon is that it calculates its critical hit chance by. Um, by the strike, so with this thing um, firing, I guess, as fast as it does, you'll find that finding um, crits and just stacking multiple critical strikes in a row is very, very easy, which is great for damage output purposes. Also, another thing, this thing supposedly has damage resistance and damage threshold ignoring, but according to engine limitations, um, at least according to the wiki, that thing actually doesn't work, but we've got piercing strike anyway, so these death claws will have zero damage threshold Anyways, so we'll get started, and another thing of note about this weapon, it's player only, and I'll show you why in right now, actually. So, note this death claw right here. What I'm going to do is click on him, and due to the third-person animations of this thing, um, well, you only get that one punch in it, and it gets even worse than that, you see. If I try to uppercut these guys, you'll get stuck in a loop. Notice how I'm doing two, three, four attacks now, even though I only entered the one. So basically now I'm being dogpiled by death claws and as good as Vat's defense is in this game, it ain't gonna save me for very long against a pack of three or four death claws. You can hear those auto inject inject stim packs going right off right now. I am basically surrounded now and I die. So only use standard attacks in Vats with this thing because uh, you'll die basically. It's no good. Alright, with that in mind, let's uh, just ignore Vats and try to use this thing outside of um, that, which is easy enough, because it's basically a point-and-click adventure game at this point. Um, your main threat when it comes to these death claws is we can actually hear the individual hits if we make sure we attack before this thing is sounds allowed to reset. Um, yeah, basically, if we get knocked back by these guys, we're heavily disadvantaged, so what you can do to remedy that is just... Um, stop the weapon from moving, that'll actually allow you to regain movement speed, and yes, you're pointing at them with your spinning death blade. You, you just really wanted to rub it in, didn't you? Anyways, regardless of that, we'll switch over to third person, because it also has this cool animation, I guess. So you are holding it in front of you like that. It's look, it looks like you're attempting not to get covered in death or guts when you've got it holding out like that. And whilst we uh, watch all of the... Um, Death claws, cripples, and all the criticals come in, you know, besides all the uh, notifications of the auto inject impacts, you get a sense of how much this does spam its criticals, which is. It's, it's, it's incredibly strong, but it does have its limitations. Um, obviously, in close quarters like this against death claws, it's extremely risky to uh, fight these guys like this. And if Deathclaw Mummy has anything to say about it, we'll be dead in a heartbeat. So, what we'll do here is. Uh, rather than taking them out in real time, which is, um... I mean, it's a good way to die. If you if you really want to kill your courier, yeah, you can do that. So we'll just get ourselves buffed up with some things. We'll have some buff out too, why not, eh? And whilst everything is in slow motion, thanks to all of the implants, let's get started on these death claws, shall we? I do like Death Claws much better in Fallout New Vegas. They're a lot, they're just a lot more interesting because they go around in packs and they aren't complete pushovers. Now, Death Claw Chad over here, he's completely jumped past us. So what we'll do is knack him as he's going through his jumping animation. See if we can't bait Mummy into doing her attack. Okay, that was the wrong one. Unfortunately, we'll kill her children to anger her. All right, there's one. Um, I'm stuck though. You can't actually jump whilst using this weapon, can you? In third person you can, but it seems to completely um, disable your attack, so there you go, there's that. We'll take out him. And then the game crashed. Okay, this time we've got all of the buffs. We ain't pulling any punches anymore. There we go, this is where we should be. And effects, lots and lots of buffs happening here. So. Let's uh, move in, shall we? We'll get some of these kills happening. Chop you up. And you can really see the difference between non-critical strikes and critical strikes because there's a lot of difference. We're barely even touching them when it comes to non-critical strikes. But, oh, there's Mummy. 
She comes in, we get a nice block on her. There's another Chad, completely sidestep him, get him in the tail as he's jumping towards us. And honestly, this is the time for flanking, I think. Obviously, attacking from the front of these Death Claws is not clever, but if we can outpath them for a second, they all turn tail and run. They're not attacking us if they're not facing us. We get easy couple of hits, easy couple of critical strikes, and easy bunch of damage. Okay, so we'll pop some more of that implant GRX. I don't know what that sound was supposed to be. I think that might have been a sound bug. Three more down the hatch or in the brain. And now, block. All right, we've blocked the mummy. Quickly take her out before she can recover and attack again. And basically, we're on easy street now. Okay, that took a lot more time than I thought it would. Oh, wait, we're not done yet. All right, prepare to die, Mr. Deathclaw. Come back here. Get here. There we go. And he jumps for joy as his foot and also head fall off, despite me attacking none of those places. So that was pretty um, solid. It did take a while, but, you know, adjusting my strategy to meet this weapon's limitations really helped me there. That was actually kind of easy. So going in old Rambo style, probably not the best for this weapon, but if you think about it a little bit, outflank your enemies, break their pathing up, make sure they don't attack you as you're attacking them then you're basically on easy street. So we'll test it on a big Robo Scorpion, I suppose. All right, so this fellow should be easy to chop up, provided we can actually close the gap by doing sneaky, dodging moves like this. I, I can't believe this is worth. Um, the trick is to get close enough to actually do a thing, and yep, we just keep on stacking those sneak attack criticals. Oh. It's time to go into Vats, I reckon. He's actually getting us with our claws, despite hitting nowhere bloody near us. Go on. We'll get him. We'll get him. Hey, I wonder if you can make your attacks faster. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, second attempt, we take a more sneaky approach. Now, we are in caution, but... No, fuck it, never mind. All right, we'll do what we did last time, but instead of attacking him from the front like some sort of idiot... Uh, what we'll do is we'll attack him from the side, because he can't stomp on us or anything. And, oh wow, that's a lovely sound to listen to. Well, it seems to be working a lot better this time. We've completely outpassed him there. And there he goes. Now, he had 15 damage threshold on him, which I believe... Hang on, how much does he usually have? He usually has... Damage threshold statistics... Wet, wet, uh, 30! Yay! Also, I, I use that command to get him in, because sometimes I forget. But, yeah. There you have it. And that was the industrial hand. And also, when you put the weapon away, it's still there. It doesn't just appear into wherever a woman might put a thing, like, of this size. It'll, um, it'll stay on your hand, which is pretty cool, I guess. That's the one thing about, um, Fallout New Vegas and 3 that is, uh, very well liked. You can see the weapon you've got equipped just by having you wear it, which is pretty sweet. All right, we'll move on to another monster. And might as well finish this off with a legendary bloatfly who is currently preoccupied with attacking a trading caravan. No, it's a fiend. Okay, I got to see this. Um, place your bets now. And down for the count goes the fiend. And we've been spotted and it's probably going to be very difficult getting in range of this guy and we only get two attacks. Now, if you actually do decide to use this thing in VATS, basically all of the damage that it did would be it'd, it'd be added at the end of the attack. So it's not like a ripple where it slowly whittles it down, it's just a big old chunk of damage. Alright, this time it's a little bit different. Um, I don't think we could possibly kill this guy without he's just too quick, he's too fast. The, the bloat flies are very strong, please nerf. But um, this time we're going to be using Implant GRX. And provided we can stay just behind him as we go, and if we're in range, we jump a little bit. I guess the jumping is the way we're supposed to do it, right? But with that, we can easily kill him. You can always depend on Implant GRX to um, give you much, much better chances of killing stuff, which you normally wouldn't be able to as easily with an unarmed or melee weapon. But I think you get the idea of this thing. The Industrial Hand. It's a pretty decent weapon. I do like it, but I reckon a regular old Power Fist, say Grease Lightning, is so much better because it's just got more punch to it. And the knockback is important for stuff like Death Claws in close quarters. Not that you'd 
ever reasonably want to use this thing. Really, you want to do this? You've, you've got a pull cue, do you? 70 hit points. How do you think this is going to go down? Yep, that seems about right. So, if you'd want to see this thing in your game, go to Lonesome Road, and you'll find it along the way. I think you, I, you find it near where you drop the nuke, when Ulysses says, Hey, man, you got to He says a lot in the DLC, that really doesn't really narrow it down. But yeah, where you drop the first nuke, there should be, from memory, a bit of a shelf, and you'll see this just sitting on the shelf. Take it if you want it. It is a nice thing to grab from it. It's a nice, unique weapon, but in terms of its form and function, it is fairly usable. It certainly fills its own niche, which is very nice. A lot of New Vegas weapons do their own special thing very, very, um, you know, they're all unique in their own way. They've all got a different purpose. So, yeah, it has use, but you'll probably find that a regular old Power Fist, or particularly Grease Lightning, might serve you better. Anyways, that's about enough from me. Thank you very much for watching, guys.